Daniel, servant of the Most High. That is why I'm saying to you that let your life be about serving the Most High. Really amazing, and I was just really blessed to be here. 
And great are you, Lord. Yeah. yeah. That was what yeah. would. I, I, no, I, no. It's no. <laughs> yes. like we yeah. like had it three times and it was powerful. Every, Every single, single time. time. And yeah. it's so amazing how Apostle Joe can like interpret atmosphere. Like yeah. he could have said the instrumentalist should play the song, but he was like, no, let's sing with the track. Yeah. 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 And then when the song would end, like when the track would end, then it he would lift it up. Yeah. And it was just, yeah. it was amazing. I think this camp, honestly, it took a lot of work, but I feel like everybody came here expecting something. And yeah. so everybody's expectations were met. And to be honest, I think our instrumentalists, like they were phenomenal. Yeah. If you want instrumentalists that have the word of God in them and can also play, I think we have that here. So if you guys are looking for you, husbands and wives, come and see me. I'll tell you which ones are instrumentally. Yes. <laughs> have you found one? <laughs> I think this camp, one of the things that I realized at this camp was that it's not about us and what we can what we can offer God. Because we can't offer God anything. I mean our lives, yeah, but we can't give him money. We don't we don't have any money. <laughs> but it it just shows that God is willing and um so eager to use us despite yeah, despite our temperamental issues and <laughs> Personal weaknesses and whatever the case. This camp, is. this camp showed that the most actually, yeah. because it's like everything, everything should have been against this camp. Like even if you do, yeah. if you would have planned an event like this in the circular world, it wouldn't have come through yeah. at all. Because first of all, it's the first camp we were planning just first love based love. So it was the first one that the adults weren't helping us. It was we didn't have a hall attached to rooms. We had to use a church building. And then with that, I can speak from the like equipment side of it. It's hard because they have their own equipment. It's not like we could bring in our stuff and everything. Their stuff is like melted in. So we had to work our equipment in with their equipment. I mean, everything was just a challenge from yeah. registration to everything. But then at the end of the day, we were actually just sitting in the back row. And we were just like, we just had a camp. Yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. I think one of the best things was that there were a lot of new faces um, at this camp. So even when we did like the planning and we were trying to get people to help in everything that we're doing, it's like we have to take their word for it. Even though we were like, oh, you don't need experience, you don't need just the willing heart. Sometimes you do need a little bit of experience. But every, everybody that volunteered um, pulled through. Actually. Yeah. Did an amazing job, actually. Yeah. So, oh, I have to share my favorite. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, my favorite moment of, I have two favorite moments uh, praise and worship, of course. And then one of the. Why praise and worship? Well, I feel like this camp's praise and worship was completely different from other praise and worship. Like they said, other people got to lead. I mean, we knew that it's not about the voice or anything. Um, of course, they all have beautiful voices, but it's just being able to flow in the spirit. Because I remember, like, there was a point where you were leading. Um, worship and then Apostle Joel walked in and then he referenced how you know the song that you were singing yeah he had he heard beautiful, he heard beautiful voices and he referenced the song in the um, in the message he was preaching actually today he also referenced how um, because you the song you were singing was what overwhelmed yeah but you only did two songs for praise and worship at that time and today in his preaching, um, he said that when you're leading worship, it's not necessarily about going through the entire list of songs that you're doing. It's just a matter of being, yeah. And then being in the spirit and also being able to determine like, oh, is this song the song to bring up? You know, just because you have like seven songs on your list does not necessarily mean that you have to go through every single one of them. And I believe that every single praise and worship session, um, more of the worship sessions were like that in general. And that's what made it really, really Powerful. And my second favorite moment of camp was when Apostle was talking about Daniel chapter 3. But 27 is the killer verse. Um, so I'm going to read that part. Verse 27. 
No, I got that now, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start from verse 25. It says, he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace, and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth in the midst of the fire. Verse 27. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was the hair of the heads singed, neither were their, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Amen. 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 This is one of my favorite verses. Um, this is one of my favorite chapters because Apostle was talking about how we should all strive to be servants of the Most High God. And that's basically, like that, I mean, that the entire camp blessed me, but when he read this verse and then pulled out the servant of the Most High God, that's what blessed me. And like, I don't know, for some reason, like everything just changed my life because you can do a whole bunch of things and you can do it for people, you can do it for whoever, but at the end of the day, you still have to question yourself and see what is your motive behind what you're doing and then are you actually serving God? Yeah, know what is your motive and then he said that don't limit God, don't limit God in general. There's so many things that God can do for us and he used Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego as an example um, from Daniel as I read earlier and um, if, if you look at the verses that there was a fourth like the son of son of God, right? Yeah. So sometimes you don't even know that <laughs> you can't even see what God is going to do for you and then he said that don't let your, don't bring your past into your present and your future. He used that same. I don't know how. Sometimes I feel like when apostles read, but it's not the same Bible. It's not the same Bible that I'm reading because I can't tell you how many times I've looked through Daniel and the same the same story, and I I just never um, saw. It. He said, "Don't bring your past into your present and your future." There's a reason why it's in your past, and he gave an example about David. David prayed that prayed against the sins of his youth should not be used against him. So everything that we've done in our past stays where we are. And the fact that, and he said that one great thing about being young is our ability to recover from everything that we've done. So no matter what you've done in the past, we're still able to recover and move forward. Yeah. Um, and I think finally, one, we want to pick up one of the first love pastors because um, he came later on. And when we were in the car with him, one thing he said was that sometimes when you're behind the scenes of a camp, you may end up even not enjoying the camp when you're here because you've seen everything that has gone on and you know it's so depressing and it's so heartbreaking. But I think I can confidently say that no matter what, whatever camp we've ever helped plan or whatever, you know, every single time we've come, we've all made it at a point to make sure that we enjoy the camp. Even if we are in just one session, make sure that you grab some of this camp. So we're hoping that We'll have another first love camp soon. Hopefully somewhere, hopefully somewhere warm, where there's not snowstorm for like three days. Yeah, and hopefully we'll be seeing all of you guys there. I know a lot of things we're trying to actually stop the camp from happening. Yeah. In general. Yeah. Because, like they said earlier, we didn't have a location. We didn't have so many things put together, and even like because of the snowstorm, a lot of people, their flights got delayed, buses mm -hmm. got canceled. Even we have we have people who came just for the Friday night eight, because they were actually supposed to go on a Wednesday or Thursday, but they ended up coming on a Friday night because of the snowstorm. And sometimes when these things happen, everybody gets frustrated. Yeah. So why are we driving through a snowstorm? Just, you know, I saw when we got here, there's no hot water, there's no this, there's no that. You know, some people were like discouraged that, you know, when their buses got canceled, they're like, oh, blah, 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 blah all these things. But actually there was one guy who, you know, from our branch, he forced his way to come. And I was really, really happy and really proud that he was even able to catch a glimpse of the camp. But who, I mean, you never, you just never know. Maybe that section of the camp was just meant for him, um, even though he was supposed to come early. And I think that the devil tried to stop, you know, the camp from happening, but we serve a God that's bigger than everything else. Mm -hmm. And with him, all things are possible. So, you know, the thing that we're going to take away from all of this is that, you know, we just all want to be servants of God. We just all want to serve God. All we have to offer our lives to God is our lives. Basically, that's all we have to offer, nothing else. So hopefully at the next camp,